In this video, we're going to focus on the hydrohalogenation reaction of alkenes. So let's start with 1-butene, and let's react it with hydrobromic acid. What's going to be the major product in this reaction? The double bond is nucleophilic. It's electron-rich. And so it's going to be attracted to the hydrogen atom because the hydrogen atom bears a partial positive charge and the bromine atom bears a partial negative charge. So the double bond is going to react with the hydrogen and the bond between H and Br, that's going to break. Now where should we put the hydrogen atom? Should we put it on the primary carbon of the double bond or on the secondary carbon? Well, if we put it on the primary carbon, we're going to have a plus charge on the secondary carbon. And if we put the hydrogen on the secondary carbon, we're going to get a positive charge on the primary carbon. Now, which carbocation is more stable? Is it the secondary carbocation or the primary carbocation? Secondary carbocations are more stable than primary ones. So this is going to lead us to the major product. And so hydrohalogenation reactions of alkenes, they're regioselective. The bromine atom is going to preferentially attack the secondary carbocation as opposed to the primary one because this is more stable. And so we're going to get the product 2-bromobutane. So this is going to be the major product. Now granted, we could get 1-bromobutane as well, but that's the minor product. And for this video, we're going to focus on the major product. Now let's talk about the stereochemistry of this reaction. We're going to get two products as opposed to one. The bromine atom, it can be in the front or in the back. So it could be on the wedge coming out of the page or on a dash going into the page. So why does this happen? Well, once we get the secondary carbocation, we have an empty p orbital. And so the bromide ion, it can attack from the front or from the back. And so depending on where it attacks, this leads to the two different products that we see here. So in your final answer, if you see that your product basically has a new chiral center, it's an indication that you could have a racemic mixture of products. Now, I want to contrast this reaction with another reaction. So this reaction proceeds with Markarnikov addition, meaning that the hydrogen will go on the less substituted carbon, the carbon that has more hydrogen atoms, and the bromine will go on the more substituted carbon, the one that has less hydrogen atoms. Now, there's another reaction, HBr with peroxides. If you see it, this will give you the anti Markovnikov product. And that's where the bromine atom goes on the less substituted carbon atom. So watch out for that one if you see HBr with peroxides. Now, let's move on to our next example. So let's react this alkene with hydrobromic acid. What do you think the major product will be in this reaction? Feel free to pause the video if you want to try it. So the double bond will react with the hydrogen, breaking the HBr bond. And as always, we're going to put the hydrogen on the primary carbon as opposed to the secondary carbon. So we can get a more stable secondary carbocation intermediate. Now, the bromide ion is not going to attack this carbocation as of yet. The reason being is we can get a hydride shift. This hydrogen is going to move towards the carbocation. And the driving force for this is stability. So we're going to have a carbocation rearrangement. So instead of having a secondary carbocation, we now have a more stable tertiary carbocation. So this will happen if you see a secondary carbocation next to a tertiary carbon. 
you're going to get a hydride shift. So now the bromide ion will attack this carbocation. And so this is going to be the product. Now we're not going to get a racemic mixture because this carbon is not chiral. We have two methyl groups attached to it. So we only get one product for this one. That is one major product. Now let's move on to our next example. So what's going to happen if the double bond is next to a quaternary carbon? And let's react it with HCl this time. So the mechanism is going to be very similar to the first one. In the first step, the double bond is going to react with the hydrogen. And so the pi bond will break, giving us a secondary carbocation intermediate. Now what we're going to have is a methyl shift. So the methyl group will move towards the carbocation. And so now the entire carbon structure changes, but we still have a tertiary carbon, which is more stable than a secondary carbocation. So now that we have this tertiary carbocation, the chloride ion will attack it. And so this will be the final product. And so that's it for this example. Consider the reaction between 2-pentene and hydrobromic acid. What products can we get in this reaction? Well, let's find out. Now, we know that the double bond is going to attack the hydrogen, expelling the bromine atom. But where is the hydrogen going to go? So notice that this carbon is secondary, and this one is secondary. So the hydrogen can go on any one of these two carbons because they're equally substituted. So let's put the hydrogen on this carbon for now. So we're going to get a secondary carbocation. And so the bromide could attack that carbon. And so this will give us 3-bromopentane. Now notice that this carbon is not chiral. So we're not going to get a racemic mixture for this particular product. Now something else could happen as well. The hydrogen could go on this carbon, producing another secondary carbocation. And if that happens, the bromide ion could attack it here. And so we can get 2-bromobutane. Now, this carbon is chiral, so we could get a receiving mixture. Therefore, we can get a total of three products for this reaction. The bromine can go on carbon three, and so this would be just one product. Or it can go on carbon two, where we can get a racemic mixture. It could be on the dash, I mean on the wedge, or on the dash. So if you have a double bond where both carbons have the same substitution, they're both secondary, so know that the bromine atom can go on either one of these two carbon atoms. Let's go over one more reaction. So let's say we have an alkene that looks like this, and we also have an OCH3 group attached to the alkene. What's going to happen if we react it with HBr? What is the major product of this reaction? Well, we know that the double bond, as always, can attack the acid. Now the question is, where should we put the hydrogen? And so where will the plus charge be? Will the positive charge go on the primary carbon or on the secondary carbon? Well, let's analyze both. So typically, we would normally put the hydrogen on the less substituted carbon atom 
to get the more substituted or the more stable carbocation. In this case, we have a secondary carbocation. Now, if we do it the other way, if we place the hydrogen on the secondary carbon, the plus charge will be on the primary carbon. So which carbocation is more stable? Is it the primary carbocation or is it the secondary carbocation? Typically, it would be the secondary carbocation. However, we do have the oxygen next to the primary carbocation. And as a result, this carbocation is stabilized by resonance. The oxygen can donate a pair of electrons, giving us this structure. And so now the oxygen bears the positive charge. So this is the intermediate that we're going to get because it's resonance stabilized. So I'm going to start with this intermediate to draw my final answer. So in this form, the bromide could attack the carbocation. And so this is going to be the final answer. So this is one of those situations where the bromine will go on the less substituted carbocation or the less substituted carbon of the double bond. And that's if the positive charge can be stabilized by resonance by something else. So if you see an oxygen or something that has a lone pair that can stabilize the carbocation, chances are the bromine atom will go there. So watch out for questions like that.